All right, B. Who are you and what's your game? Dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free. This is so like you, Gladstone. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, you slay me, what a fool! I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary shields to... It isn't my dear the old Oka chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to government. stab you in the back? This bill is a vital step in reforming our government. An exception. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the, the results of contested not. elections, we can Was scarcely that? call there ourselves a, free. A if we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free. This and is so, so like I you, Gladstone. You would rather so throw your fight. body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. <laughs> By God, Disraeli, you are a eh? fool. Oh, yes. I'll not stand idly Bravo, by and watch you drag Lord parliamentary Cardigan. privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny? Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crown to the bloody stones! How dare you, sir? 
Merely because I do not wish to see government placed in the hands of judges, you would make these slanderous accusations? I'll not stand for it. Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. Resume. Why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir! Some old bloke paid me to... Smug bastard. Where did you come from? Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lights are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Oh, oh, oh. Perfect.
time have I been treated so unjust? Some fun in your mind. Fine, girl. Keep moving. Come on. of this who the devil are you prime minister i'm your new bodyguard jacob fry i wasn't informed of any new bodyguard who's your commanding officer let the boy speak dizzy <laughs> madam apologies but we've learned of a threat on your life and the met thought it best to move quickly threat what sort of threat <gasps> that sort if you excuse me a moment
Not so fast, Your Excellency. Hey! Get back here with that Prime Minister! Yeah! about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry.
Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. <laughs> I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. the way. Um, 
Perhaps you'd let me recommend something divine. instead. I'm fully aware of what they're doing. God bless them. What sort of meat is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company. But another name for it is Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are. The old one tough. So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? Remarkable. <sighs> nice doggy. <laughs> Desmond, hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I've just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> Well, well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. <sighs> let's go. Yeah! Yeah! in the Hussar's uniform. Quite right. Lord Cardigan is the gentleman we seek. Thomas. Always blabbering on about his military yeah. adventures. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens, yeah. campaigning against yeah. the corrupt practices. Perhaps you could catch him in the Palace of Westminster. Oh, do be careful. The government could ill afford I assure you, I'll be very discreet. Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes.
straight to the pie after you've shot it in the map. <laughs> Oi, is that your face? Or you got your arse on backwards? <laughs> oh, shit! Oh, 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 oh. I will ever forget this. Thanks very much. Join me.
Highway robbery, that's what it is. What has happened? Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder. And if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank or England's currency. There, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Well, it would certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. It really is very good of you to help. Follow me. The counterfeit money is being spent nearby. Well, if you can prove the counterfeit, with those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Avalon. If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots. Mr. Aberline. <coughs> I have the utmost faith in you, Miss Fry. You two, follow me. I don't wish to be robbed on my way to the cart.
keep this place locked down. Yes, sir. Guard this place as you would the Bank of England itself. Absolutely, sir. I didn't know better. <laughs> so she was hiding. to sneak these back into the bank.
There, as if they were never taken. London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Face in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me.
What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law.
guards very prettily. Nearly getting assassinated was the best thing for his career. Pardon me, gentlemen. Sergeant Freddie Aberline of Scotland Yard. Where might this scandalous activity be taking place? Oh, yes, yes. It's uh, uh, just this way. Follow me, Sergeant, but discreetly, if you would. One doesn't like to be seen having a fellow member of Powing's dirty linen. What? I'll be very discreet. Surely 
such upstanding sentinels of Britannia are not wavering in their duties, hmm? Israeli support. Password. Um. Ah. Baby apple. Piss off. Propose the bill of Shame. Shame. Balaclava should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick. Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, he just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. Galena! Blimey, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Uh, there were many explosions and you screamed like a baby. 
Bishop tells me Otzelberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud. Nigel's in a spot of trouble. 